This short video illustrates formulas that reference cells in a pivot table. If you have never tried to create such formulas, you might be in for a surprise. The formulas will look very strange, even though they make sense. And if you don't like the way they look, you can change an Excel option to make them look like what you are used to. I will again use the online purchases dataset you have seen before. I have already created a typical pivot table. As a side calculation, perhaps I would like the total of sales to males in the evening and sales to the females in the morning. I will create this formula in the usual way in a blank cell. This is hardly what you expected, is it? The formula uses the getPivotData function to access parts of the pivot table. If you look closely at the first getPivotData function, you will see that it lists several field values pairs. The first is the total spent field, and its value is in cell A3, a reference to the sum of total spent. The next pair is the purchase time field, and its evening value. The last pair is the customer gender field and its mail value. The second get pivot data function is similar. So this strange looking formula does make sense. You might also see a mix of two styles in a formula. I will request the sum of afternoon sales to males and morning and evening sales to females. The latter produces the usual cell references. In any case, if you don't like the strange formulas, you can change an Excel option under Formulas. I will uncheck this box, a toggle. Existing formulas don't change automatically, but new ones will look normal. So the choice is yours. You can accept the get pivot data formulas or you can revert to the usual cell referencing. 